Oh, hi, hi everyone. My name is Ji Wen Xing. I'm from uh, Dr. Chong Liu and Andrew Su's lab. Today I'm going to present about Biosync Explorer, which utilizes JSON LD for linking biological APIs to facilitate knowledge discovery. Uh, as we all know, that recent biological developments have fueled a flood of data uh, on a variety of biological entities like genes or variants or like pathways or proteins. And we have seen a growing number of research fields in biological science, such as translational medicine or like system bio chemical biology, which relies a lot on data, which from coming from different, multiple different um, biological concepts, uh, such as a project on like data mining for drug repurposing. It normally requires data from like pathways or drugs or genes. So typically when people are doing this kind of jobs, they go to each data source, download the data and parse the data and combine them together. Uh, this is very troublesome and, and error prone and moreover, it's very hard to, to keep up to date with the data source. So what we are thinking here is that, is, there, is it possible to generate a very easy way to link all those databases together to, uh, to facilitate this kind of research? And what we propose here is Biosync Explorer, which is relying on the fact that uh, currently most API, uh, most data providers, such as like EBI or NCBI, they actually provide JSON APIs to distribute their data. And moreover, there are also a lot of uh, community efforts, such as like MyGene.info or MyVarian.info or like BioLink or like Pharos. <laughs> they actually aggregate uh, a large number of data uh, and provides them by uh, using API uh, on a specific or multiple different uh, biological concepts. Uh, so Biosense Explorer actually utilizes JSON LD as well as like, uh, uh, which is JSON for linked data, as well as uh, Open API initiative uh, to link those APIs together uh, to facilitate research like translational medicine. Uh, so. As we can see that one key issue in linking API together is the API interoperability. So on this slide, I have listed like three sample outputs from three different APIs, uh, namely like Inzembo, MyGene.info, and MyVarian.info. So as shown on the red line here, you can see that uh, these three fields actually all represent Inzembo gene ID. But you can see that Inzembo gene ID actually is represented by three different field names from three APIs and it is nested under different uh, uh, JSON structure. Uh, so for a bioinformatician like us, we probably know that these three fields refers to the same thing, but there's no way for computers to recognize that. So it would be hard for us to automatically link these APIs together. So JSON LD actually come right in the way to solve this issue. So as you can see in the left, which is the, which is the input, uh, so the red, uh, the box which is highlighted by the purple one actually is the JSON LD context file. So below the context file is actually the original JSON document. So you can see the key idea for JSON LD is providing this context file which assigns each field with a universal identifier which is called a URI. So a URI is unique for every biological concept. For example, like symbol, which re represents a gene symbol, has a uni un unique URI, which is identify.org slash hgnc.symbol. So that by aligning all those field names with a URI, we can actually align those APIs together. And JSON-LD provides uh, inner like algorithm to transform your original like JSON input into a variety of different output formats like unquads or like compacted formats. Uh, so JSON LD actually provides us a way, an easy way to align those APIs, and it provides an uh, idea of like what the output of the API should look like. JSON API should look like. But, uh, but in order to link APIs together, we also need more. So, and more specifically, we need to know that what are the inputs of the API and how can I make the API call. Uh, and this is, uh, this is largely benefit from the Open API Initiative, which is an initiative to standardize the API description. And it is not only limited to biological APIs, but basically for all API descriptions. So Biosense Explorer actually uh, extracts information from 
the open API, and we generate a metadata YAML file, uh, which is shown on the right. So this is a sample metadata YAML file for my gene.info, which is a JSON API. So you can see that this API has two endpoints. Uh, one is called gene annotation, and the second one is the query services. So you can see here that my gene.info actually takes uh, NCBI gene as its input, and what it outputs is like wiki pathways or like PubMed IDs or Uniprod IDs. Uh, so currently in Biosense Explorer, we have uh, aggregated over like 15 different databases. So I have only listed around like 30 here. So the majority of them like React Tom or wiki pathways, they have their own APIs, but there are also some like DB and SAPs, they only have their data source files, but these data source files are actually aggregated by other APIs like mygene.info or myvarian.info. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we actually build Biosense APIs using Python, and on top of that, we use cytoscape.js uh, to do the data user interface. So if the user is very clear that what they have as their input and what they want as their output, um, you can very easily use the Biosense Explorer service by, uh, by specifying on the top like what you want as the input, which is a starting ID. So here we have HGVS ID as the input, and what you want as the output, which here we specify like clinical trial ID, and it will automatically uh, give you the path of how can you link from HGVS ID to a clinical trial ID through APIs. So now you can see that you can link from HGVS ID using my myvarian.info and you get the gene symbol. So, and you can use gene symbol as the input and through like my drag.info you can get clinical trial ID as the output. Uh, so once you know that uh, what APIs you can utilize to perform your job, uh, you can actually use the explorer function in the Biosense Explorer. So you can see that uh, on the bottom, um, this is the NCBI gene ID 1136, so you want to use 1136 as the input. And once you click on 1136, uh, the navigator will automatically show you all the APIs which can be linked out from this NCBI gene ID. So, and then you can link to like RefSeq IDs or like React Home IDs or like NCBI uh, React through like my gene.info and further on you can get like a gene symbol and when you click on a biological entity like a gene symbol, uh, it will just show you again like how many APIs it can link out. So now you can see that it can link from like DGIDB, which is a disease gene interaction. So it can get you all the like drugs related to a gene. And you can also go through like links disease. So you can get the disease ontology information, which is related to the gene symbol. So you can see through Biosense API, it actually traverse multiple different APIs uh, and across multiple different biological entities. Uh, so yes, so that's the major part of the talk. So last but not least, I would like to thank the Biosense team, which is led by Chong Lei and Andrew. And also you can check for some of our, uh, so here biosense.io slash explorer is the website. Uh, and we also have the Python client. So the website is mainly for user interface, which you can only do like one ID at a time, but we have the Python client, which you can do like a list of different IDs to, to perform your workflow. Uh, also, please check our website, uh, check our poster, which will be presented um, like the day after tomorrow, um, the Transmed session. Uh, also, like we're also hiring right now, so if you're interested, you can go to like bit.ly slash uh, join Biosyncs. Uh, we're hiring like a bioinformatician. Thank you. <laughs>